Okay guys, so we are going to finish up our science lesson, chapter three, lesson two um, for today, okay? And then you also will have a worksheet to do at the end of the lesson. So we're on pages 96 and 97. So go ahead and turn in your books on those pages in your science book so it looks like this. Should have two raccoons in the front, okay? Turn in your book and we will get started. All right. So on page 96, it says at the top, pollen on the move. So yesterday, or actually this would have been Friday, we talked about um, the reproduction of plants, right? And their different parts. So we have the girl part or the female part, and that's called the pistil. And we have the male part, and that's called the stamen, okay? And a lot of flowers have both of these parts, but some flowers don't. If they, if they have both the female part and the male part, that means they're perfect flowers. That's what that's called. And imperfect flowers means that they only have one or the other. So they only have either the male part or the female part. Okay. Um, and then the sepals are the leaf-like coverings on the petals. And you guys know the petals are the pretty, par pretty parts of the flower. Okay. We also have that anther, which has that pollen on it. The anther is on top of the male part, which is the stamen. Okay, so just a refresher from yesterday because we are going to be talking about some of these parts again today as we're talking about pollination because pollination, pollen, is on the anther, okay, which is on the, fe or the male part of the flower. So it's kind of, it all relates to each other. Okay, so pollen on the move, and I'm sure you guys have seen pollen before. This is the yellow kind of dusty stuff on some flowers. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. In order for seeds to form, pollen has to get from a stamen to a pistil. Sometimes animals may help play a part in moving pollen. Okay, so in order for a new flower to grow, in order for us to get that seed, the pollen has to move from the stamen, so from that boy, that uh, male part of the flower, to that female part of the flower called the pistil. So it has to move from the stamen to the pistil, okay? The pollen does and in order to do that a lot of the times um, different animals different insects they help with that process they have sticky on their feet and from landing on one flower to the next flower they can pollinate those flowers okay so they bring that pollen from one flower to another one flowers make a sweet liquid called nectar this is a tasty food for bats bees butterflies and birds and actually they use bees use this food to also make honey, okay? Um, scent and color guide animals to the flower. As an animal feeds, pollen from the stamen rubs off its body. The pollen may then rub off onto the pistil and, of the next flower and the animal visits. Uh, this movement of pollen from stamen to pistil is called pollination. So pollen moving from stamen to pistil, so moving from that male part to that female part of the flower is called pollination. Makes sense, doesn't it? Pollination has the word pollen in it. So it's pollination is um, just moving pollen from one flower to another one or from the stamen to the pistil, okay? And like I said, bees, butterflies, birds, all different types of animals help with that pollination process by having that on their body and moving to another flower or moving that to the pistil or that female part. Um, and then also it talks about how would animals be attracted to the flower? Why would animals want to go on that flower anyways? What would make them want to go on that flower? Well, for one, they make that sweet nectar, okay? That attracts the animals because they know it's there. They want that sweet nectar to eat. And then also just the scent and the color of the flower. A lot of, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a hummingbird before. Those are those fast moving birds. They are attracted to red. So that's why a lot of hummingbird feeders are red, okay? And that's why a lot of the times they're attracted to those red flowers. Um, we talked about the other day, the flower doesn't also always have to smell good. Sometimes it smells bad. And then those animals are attracted to that bad scent too. Okay. So they're attracted to the scent, the color, and also the nectar that's inside the flower. 
Okay, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And just remember that pollination is um, when the pollen goes from stamen to pistil. Okay, we are going to look at um, number five question. It says, analyze. Look at the photos of the bees on the pages. How do a bee's features help pollinate plants? Okay, how do a bee's features help pollinate plants? So I kind of talked about this already. Um, pollen, which is that yellow dusty stuff, sticks to the hairs of the bee, okay, on the body. And also, uh, it also sticks to the legs because the legs are sticky too. So the pollen sticks to the hairs on the bee's body and legs, and then it also sticks to the legs, and then it transports it from flower to flower or where it needs to go from pistil or from stamen to pistil. Okay, so pollen sticks to the hair on the bodies or on the bee's body and legs. Okay, and you can see that up at the top, there's a bee and there's pollen sticking to the leg of that bee. It's going to be brought to another flower or to the pistil. Okay, let's move on. It says most trees and grasses rely on wind for pollination. Okay, so a lot of flowers rely on the birds, the butterflies, the bees, all that kind of stuff. Okay, but most trees and grasses rely on the wind. So there's a lot of different factors that play a part in this pollination process. Okay, so they rely on the wind for pollination. These plants do not attract animals. They do not have sweet smells or big flowers with colorful petals. However, they produce huge amounts of pollen. The wind will carry at, at least a few pollen grains to the pistil of another plant. Okay, so trees and grasses and all that kind of stuff, they do not have those petals and those scents to attract different animals. So they rely on that wind to get their pollen from one place to another. Number six says infer. Some people are allergic to pollen. Why do you think their allergies are worse on windy days? What do you think? The wind's probably blowing the pollen around on windy days, right? So blowing it around, it's in the air more and you're smelling or you're breathing in that air and the pollen's going inside of your nose and inside your body. And if you're allergic to that, that's why you're going to um, have your allergies that day. So the wind blows more pollen on windy days, okay? All right, let's look at, actually, let's look at our questions here. Um, well, we're gonna finish reading and then we'll look at our questions. We're on page 97, it says, after pollination, once a pollen grain lands on a pistil, now remember the pistil is the female part, a thin tube grows down through the pistil. So, the pistol has a long tube that leads to what? what? Do you remember what's, here, I have a picture on my phone again. Do you remember what the pistol is attached to? Okay, so this is the pistol. Get this back up. This is the pistol, okay? This right here, do you remember what that's called? The ovary, yes, the ovary. So we're looking at this part right here. The pollen goes here, so this is kind of a sticky part up at the top here. The pollen goes here and it travels down this tube, okay? And it needs to go to the ovary, okay? So once a pollen grain lands on the pistil, a thin tube grow, grows down through the pistil. This pollen tube reaches the thick bottom part of the pistil called the ovary. Sperm cells from the pollen travel down the pollen tube to the egg cells. So there's egg cells in that ovary part that I just showed you, and there are sperm cells inside of the pollen. And once those pollen sperm cells get to the egg cells, that is the process of fertilization. So the sperm cell and the egg cell combine in the process of fertilization. So fertilization is when the sperm cell combines with the egg cell, so they combine together, okay? That's called fertilization. The flower changes after fertilization. The petals and stamens dry up and fall off. 
the fertilized egg inside the ovary develops into a seed. The ovary grows into a fruit which protects the seed or seeds. When the fruit is ripe, the seeds are ready to grow um, into new plants. So a lot of the times, uh, what it's saying is, a good example for this would be like an apple tree. Have you guys ever heard of apple blossoms? Okay, so apples start out as flowers, so they're pretty flowers on top of a tree or on a tree. And once this fertilization process happens, once the egg and sperm cell meets, a change happens. So that blossom, for, for an example, an apple, that apple blossom will dry up, so the petals will kind of disappear. Uh, the prettiness will kind of go away, but it will grow a fruit at the end, okay? So that's when it grows that fruit. Um, but first, and, and then it'll grow a seed too inside of that fruit, so then more apples can be grown, okay? So let's go ahead and look at our question on page 97, number seven. It says, explain, how are the seeds in an apple protected? Think of whenever you eat an apple, how would the seeds be protected? The core, right? Yeah, so whenever you're eating an apple, you can't eat past a certain part because it kind of gets a little bit harder. So that protects the seeds. Honestly, I think the seeds are also protected by like the outside of the apple, the skin, and then the meat of the apple, which is the part that you eat, okay? Because you need to get through that to get to the seeds too. So it's protected by the core and fruit around the seeds, okay? So all that part that surrounds the seeds. Okay, and we are going to look at some more questions just to help us clarify what's going on here. So it says identify what are two ways that pollen is carried from the stamen to the pistil. So it goes from the stamen, which is the male part, to the pistil. How does that happen? How do they get that to happen? There's three things. Insects, right, like the birds, or the bees, sorry, I just gave you the answer to the next one. Bees and like butterflies, so insects, and then the animals, so like the birds, and then what else? There's one more thing. What about trees and, what else did it say? Trees and grasses, what do they rely on? They don't have that pretty part of their flower, so what do they rely on? The wind, right? They need wind to get that pollination going, okay? They need wind for pollination. Uh, explain, what guides an animal or an insect to a flower? So what makes an animal or an insect want to go to a flower or a plant? The scent, right, the smell of it, and then also the color of the flower. I talked about how hummingbirds a lot of the times are really attracted to red. Sometimes whenever you're even wearing like a red shirt like this, they'll come and swoop down at you. I've already had that happen. They're just attracted to that color, okay? And that's why flowers have certain colors to them. Uh, generalize, why do some animals play an important role in plant reproduction? Why do you think? Why do some animals play an important role in plant reproduction? Well, they bring the pollen to where it needs to be, right? And then, then fertilization can happen, which means uh, the egg cell combines with the sperm cell. So animals may, are responsible for that even happening. That would, fertilization would not happen without that pollen being carried from the pistil, to, or from the stamen to the pistil, okay? Um, justify, which red delicious ap apple has seeds that are ready to grow into plants? One that is green or one that is bright red? Explain. Okay, so red delicious apples are ripe whenever they're red. Okay, it never really described this in the book, so I'm going to kind of just give you the answer. Red delicious apples are ripe when they're red, and seeds, whenever, they, whenever the fruit around them is ripe, that's when a seed is ripe itself, okay? You need to wait till the fruit is ripe for the seed to be ripe. So the red apple, um, because it's ripe, and ripe fruits have seeds that are ready to grow, okay? So you need a ripe fruit in order to have that seed that's ready to go and make more fruits and more trees. Um, what about, what do pine trees rely on most for pollination? What do pine trees rely on? Now remember, that's a tree. It doesn't have those pretty flowers, so what do they rely on? 
They rely on the wind, yes, because they don't have those flowers and they don't have those scents that attract those different animals. What about what two events must happen before fertilization takes place? So remember, fertilization is when the sperm and the egg come together. So the pollen gets carried to the ovary, right? So pollen must travel from the stamen to the pistil. That's the first thing. It has to go from the stamen to the pistil. And then the pistil has that sticky spot on it that attracts that pollen. Um, and then, so the pollen must go from the stamen to the pistil, and then the sperm cells have to travel through that tube to the ovary. And I showed you a picture of that ovary part too. So it has to get in, the pollen has to get in that ovary. All right, I think that's it. So go ahead and go to the next slide and we'll continue on learning about uh, pollination and um, all the ways that plants grow.